All right, step 23, second try. I've cleaned everything up, re-straightened everything out, so we get back to basically step zero. Gotta remember now where we were and what's going on. At this point in time, we have glued F46 and F20 together, the mount and the uh, exhaust stack, and F23, which is the uh, exhaust cap or, or flapper, that's all on. We've bent the photo etch shroud. The important thing to remember is this is the bottom. We've got the two side pieces that are gonna go in here and we have the back of the shroud that's gonna go up top. The hard part about all this is that this goes in, not in this direction, this goes in this way, like so. Now, what was pointed out was that if we do it like this, where we push this piece all the way to the front and let this be the kind of the spacer, then we have the indents on the side photo etch that those photo etch pieces go on. So then we can just kind of push it in all the way down here. Now the problem is, is that there's only one centerpiece for that depth and so it rocks. And that bites. And to make sure that everything is square is hard as well. So what I'm going to propose doing is on this side of the curve, this is easy. So I can put one of those <clears throat> on here to set it as a guide, put that in, it'll hold it and keep it from rocking, set that in, then take the other piece, put it on the other side, take this piece, put it up top. Everything at that point then should be at to here, square and correct. Let's see what happens. So first, take this, put a little glue on it, Again, specifically putting it on the shorter side of the two, remembering that this is the bottom over here, not the top. And for whatever reason, this photo etch really likes to go up the curve. I mean, it's like it's going uphill when it's moving. It's might be just a artifice, a, uh, a artifact of it being a little curved itself or something, but it's, it's an awe. <laughs> and yeah, my forceps are glued together again. But it is just an odd little thing I've noticed is it doesn't wanna actually stay flat. Now, the only one thing I want to do is make sure that that is where it should be. Oh. Okay. Oh, and that's a good point, too. Actually, I was putting it on backwards. So, I mean, still, this is, this is weird. This is difficult. So, if you look at the strip that you get, this rivet right here is really close to the top. This rivet has some space. If you look at this side right here, on the side, there is space in between there. So you wanna match up the spaced rivet side, which I was not doing, with the spaced rivet point at the bottom. This is pretty doggone complicated and the instructions do not in any way really cover this. In fact, when I'm looking at the, the uh, instructions on here, it looks like the rivet goes right to there which I suppose is possible, and I might be screwing this up too, but I don't think so. But I want those rivets to match up. So I'm going to do it that way, and it should work. And if it doesn't, well, at least you guys have learned what not to do. 
Again, making sure that the curved portion is at the bottom so that I'm not putting these on upside down. Put that on, okay. Rivets match up, that's important to me. There we go with that. Take the knife. Put a little glue. Now when I clean this up off camera, <laughs> I uh, used a file to help get the glue off and that also helped to rough up the edge. So this might even stick better than before. Which is not a bad thing in my mind, but I just wanted to point that out in case some of you have other uh, experiences doing this. Now, I'm also making sure that this is close to the side. So at this point in time, that looks good. Looks like I've got the rivets where I want them, where they're across from their their counterpart on the main piece. This is drying, so I gotta keep that in mind that even though it's super glue, this is still going. So that looks like it's in the right place. Starting at this corner down here, working up, because this is the bottom. This is the top where this piece will be checking the alignment to the sides to make sure that this is in properly not sticking too far out or too far in same thing with this side here this is the file that I used before just going down the side of this to make sure everything is good Don't want any surprises. This is this is complicated. I was complimenting Hobby Boss on having the photo etch, and I still think that that they did a good job in this regard. And um, the other thing to notice is that it does match up that the ring here goes in this solid piece. There it doesn't have the the holes or the uh, elongations, whatever you want to call them, in it. So that matches up well, and yes, it matches up right to the side like I had hoped, right down here. So now I need to put this together. And then how do I, you know, how do I get this to stick where it's supposed to go? Well, that's where the super glue comes in again. Although because it's it feels like because there was some there already. I don't have to worry about it as much, but in this case, I am going to screw this up entirely. Ha ha. Put some in while using the back side of the blade. This is probably not something that needs to be worried about as much. I'm probably overthinking this part of it, but, um, yeah, this is how I'm doing it. Because I want to have that right up against the edge. And I want it glued on real good. All right, so now we have this piece glued in. I am not gonna glue it in on there because I'm just not sure how solid that foundation is gonna be. I'd rather have this solid right here. So I'm going to next 
glue on that other side piece. And I need that because even though I have this nice corner down here for this strip, I really don't have a solid location on this strip. And in fact, I may even put this on first. At least I figured out all the problems, why this thing was folding up weird, why I couldn't get this to quite square up right way when I was pushing it together kept acting weird well yeah because it's it wasn't put together right so this is now seated on top of the plastic it's even up with the photo etch on either side that's how that should sit and then I'll put that last piece of trim right down this side and also at the same time glue this down because it'll all this will have already started to glue it down and everything at that point in time should be solid and ready to go so following my lead put this strip on first glue in the uh, exhaust pipe now with what I'm doing here glue on the top part of the exhaust so that it will set up a anchor like so and then we can put the last brace on the inside now the nice thing that I like about this is none of this is actually physically necessary for structure meaning this photo etch is not seriously holding anything in place. So if I don't have that trim on right now when I'm doing this, I'm not going to somehow make this weaker or more stupid or something like that. But you'll notice now, I've got this on, we've got our general shape. These things are not perfect in, in real life. They get banged around a lot. And when they're hot, they're a little bit easier to uh, deform than when they're cool. So now I just have to glue this down. Like so. So that my plastic parts are sticking well. Now I could use the plastic cement too, but I don't want to take the extra you know, a few hours that would make, make it, that would take it to make me feel comfortable about this being solidly secure before I, I moved on with the super glue. And now with this, then I'm going to start putting super glue on while I'm holding the bottom together. So I can put the side piece on. I'm trying to get the glue to go on and yeah so there's that now I'm going to take my trim piece and this one I'm going to try and just pop in there should just drop right in without issue again like so and the neat thing about it is and I didn't notice this before either so maybe this is maybe this is even more complicated than I thought is this side is a little shorter and doesn't have that gap or I'm sorry this piece that I just put on has the rivets on it really close on both ends. So they match up. There's a rivet there and a rivet there. Rivet there and a rivet there, but this is a little bit shorter than this one. So you may want to pay attention to which one. So <laughs> now that we're at the end, woohoo! Look at that. It is a thing of beauty. 
<laughs> now with this, just for, for laughs, even though it's supposed to be hidden, I'm gonna take some of my debonder and just run it through here to clean up this extra glue just in case it's going to affect the, the next step. I don't want it to do that. I just want to get this glue cleaned up the edges uh, off the edges so that it doesn't interfere with the build. Nothing other than that. If there's anything on these edges, just clean it up. Real lightly. I'm not putting hardly any pressure at all on this. Take a Take a square look at it. How does it look overall? How does it look on this side? Looks pretty good to me. I'm, I'm happy with that considering all the fun we just had. Finally, moving on to the last part, we have to bend this in four different spots, here and here for these the two ends to have a uh, the L shape there, the 90 degree bends, and then we have to bend the sides up so that, and then we have to curve this piece to match the edge. And it looks like it makes a ducting or holder or something, but we want this to look good. So, this has a, a much tighter curvature to it here. And I would rather curve that first if I can find something. I'm going to use the back end of a paintbrush here just to, to get it started. That'll at least give me a, a beginning to work with after these get folded up. Now, I just did that the wrong direction again because here we have the little... Uh, circle with the ridge around it we want to go on the other side so i've got to get over this idea well no no that's that's right because we're folding everything into these trenches now instead of away from it so i don't know if there's necessarily a lack of consistency or if there's more of a reason for it but what i did wrong with the exhaust shroud piece right here would have been right for this so pay very close attention to what the part is and what you're doing so i'm gonna screw this in clamp, or clamp this in i guess is a better phrase i'm going to clean off my hobby knife because i let it roll into the little puddle of super glue i put there that was not cool clean my knife off so I have a nice flat surface to work with. Now if this seems like it's a little unprofessional, you know, hey, he's dropping his knife and his super glue and all that, well, guess what? I'm not really a professional. This is my hobby. I'm not doing this for my livelihood. I'm doing this for fun. <laughs> and, you know, in this case, since this is a commission build, to help somebody else out too. But these two pieces, these two folds right here, I think are going to be the most annoying. I think the bigger ones are the same folds that are on that round piece are not going to be nearly as much trouble. They feel like they want to go. So I've got my folds. Yeah, maybe putting the super glue where the knife can roll into it is not a, the smartest thing. Now, these would be really hard to do on here. I mean, I could do it with the flanges, but you know what? I just I just don't want to. So I'm going to fold this over and look at that. I'm I'm getting what I think is a nice tight fold. If I'm really worried about it, that's where I tap the edge with this to help tighten it up a little bit. Now 
Now the same thing right here. So, sorry if I'm a little off camera. Again, I shouldn't be. And getting back into it. Now notice that these 90 degrees are a little bit cut in. We'll deal with that in a minute. This goes on the inside. So, like I said, wanted to get it started. And then this is this is kind of like, uh, I guess when I was in high school, I took metal shop and I got the, the, we got the curve here. And then what we have to do is just basically kind of bend it along like a piece of tin to get it to, to fit right. And this goes in between the two sides and then we're gonna have to glue them together. Shouldn't be too bad, but let's not jump to conclusions. We haven't, uh, we haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> Just a day for, a day for uh, squaring things back up, Le relearning. Now on the inside of this, I can just put the glue, the super glue in, and I'm not worried about it because this is not going to show. So I'm going to tap a fair amount in there, make sure that it's gluing. Just kind of pressure hold it there for a minute with that, uh, that flap on the inside. Just to make sure that everything's good it wants to move you know screw it doesn't set immediately I find that annoying but that's the way that it is well that's setting go in and grab some more super glue for the other side it up and it's apparently set just enough to where it's good now I dropped it do I need to see yeah it's still okay but there's that I'm not gonna worry about the 90 degrees just at this point because that I haven't fit it to the plastic yet maybe it's okay so what it's showing me is here's the pulley system right here that's going to go over that pulley system because there's the part flip this around and there's that right here and it's going to allow us to have the uh, piston piece right there but you can see that those those 90 degree grabs are a problem and to be completely honest with you this arm probably should be a separate piece right here because it's that arm that should probably protrude out of that really nice little uh, divot right here so that you can sit and crank one way or the other with it and this of course goes by the by the shroud right there but it looks like to do that, you would have to basically shave all this off, put that on, and then make a new armature. I'm not going to do that right now. I suppose it's something I could do later on. Right now, I just want to get this piece on. There, I have it on. The 90 degree, the lack of 90 degrees, I guess, isn't really much of a problem. And it gives you that. Now, is all that work worth this piece? I don't know, but that's what you have to work with. And this is what I'm working with. And so I'm going to get her done. So I'm going to come in from underneath and put some super glue in the larger areas. Get it started. Now, 
Now I'm just putting the glue in. Now I'm going to go through and start trying to figure out how I want it to line up so that it it looks decent. So it looks at least semi-square, so on and so forth. And I like how that looks right there, so I'm going to hold it for a minute. It's a little bit of a gap. It's level with the bottom. Okay. Now, to get this to stay, right now, spray it with a little accelerator. Blow on it. Okay, there it is. Now, I have two options. I can use the um, cleaning solution or uh, debonder on this. I have no idea what the accelerator does with the debonder. Looks like it lets it clean up. So, no big deal. Just cleaning up the edges so that it looks good. And the down, the one downside, of course, is that this right here is not quite square, basically because of the arm. So I'm going to have to either accept it or put a little glue in there and get it to stay. Like so. So regardless I now have my piece this took a lot of work to get to this point right here now I'm gonna take this with this on the, the back like so and it gets angled so it's not a straight up and down kind of look but it gets hooked like that it looks odd but that's the way that the instructions have it 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 fits so in this case i'm going to take my liquid super or my liquid glue just get it in there so that this starts to bond and step 23 is complete i feel like i've survived something traumatic <laughs> but it's done and we'll see how this all ends up looking when we put it together. However, uh, join me again and we will get through step 24, which has the uh, cable and winching platform, some photo etch and all that. And I get the feeling that I'm going to be in much better condition to do that than I was today. Thanks for joining. See you next time.